Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, want to always come away with a win and learn a couple good lessons last week. So uh, I think we had a little bit of a chip on our shoulder for this week. So we handled what we needed to do out there on the field well and uh, just ready for next week. Uh, yeah, same there. Just a chip on our shoulder from last week. Start off a little slow, but then defense, they, we fell into the game plan and we picked things up, finished how we should. All right, well, so if we have any questions, guys, if you have a uh, it was a very cool experience. Uh, you know, obviously, I've been I played out there before, but never started the game off. So uh, it was a really cool experience in that in that matter. And uh, you know, I was just excited to come away with a win. You know, it's all about the team. So any way we can find a way to win, that's just what we're gonna do. Did it uh, mm-hmm. kind of help you settle in a little bit when you hit that Devontae for a 50 yard hit right away? Yeah, it did. You know, usually I like to get settled in, you know, maybe it's my feet or, or throwing in the air, but, you know, it's good to get, get that off the, on the first drive, get a 50 yard touchdown. So it's always good. Um, one more for me, just, you know, can you talk a little bit about how you love to run? Obviously, coach maybe tried to pull that in a little bit. I don't think you ran until the second quarter, like midway through. Was it kind of a conscious thing to not look to run so much, or is it just kind of the way things played out? Uh, well, the protection held up very well, uh, and you know they had a very light box, so I knew that I was going to have a lot more time in the pocket. So uh, I was kind of trying not to get out in the pocket and run, uh, trying to sit in the pocket and, and respect the pocket and respect the old line. Uh, so that's what I did, and then when I needed to go, I, I went. <clears throat> Yeah, Colin, just talk a little bit about the running game. Coop and Garcia, they had a pretty good game today. Just uh, talk about how much that helps you in the offense, leading the offense when those guys can rack up yards for you and create long drives. Yeah, like I said, it was a very light box, so we knew that uh, the running game was going to be there uh, for the whole day. Uh, and I'm pretty sure all of our running backs got in the end zone today, so that's pretty spectacular. But, you know, being able to hand the ball off and, you know, eliminate, you know, the perimeter and, and deep balls down the field and just give them the ball, you know, it's – so it feels a lot better on me and the wide receivers, and I know the O-line enjoys that, too. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, a question for Wes. Um, talk about the defense on mm-hmm. one. You know, only one number is 5 for 60 on third downs. So talk about that performance. Um, uh, that's just a big emphasis for our team, like our standards, uh, goals to win. We need to dominate on third downs. And we feel like our past couple weeks, that's like we've been slacking in those areas. So we just want to come out today and just dominate, put our style of football on tape as we did today. So, so Colin, I need to ask this. So whose idea was it for the punt? And how did that come to fruition with the punt? I saw you celebrate afterwards. So like, how did it feel to finally you know, kick a punt? Uh, well, I never thought I'd be in this situation. I came here to uh, play quarterback, obviously. But <laughs> uh, you know, I, like I said, you know, anything for the team to win. So. Went in there. I was told to kick it as far as I could, so that's what I tried so to do. Whose idea was that, by the way? Whose idea for you to kick the punt? Oh, uh, it's just how the dice rolled. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Last call for questions for you guys, Alan. Yeah, they just talked. They had that big tight end that got free a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about what was going on there, and then obviously you guys made some adjustments because he didn't do much after. Definitely. Uh, yeah, so we knew coming in the game that he was, a, he was one of the key players. They want to give him the ball in space. They're going to find different ways to get it to him. So they did a good game plan. They found something we weren't really prepared for too much, but we got a handle, got our eyes in the right place. We picked it up. What was kind of the difference, I think, from uh, nine minutes left, second quarter, they didn't score. Right. I was just basically coming on the sideline, playing to our standard. Like, we shouldn't let these things happen. Like, we talked about it all week, our game plan overwhelming the, what our style of football is, just dominate. So we got back to it, back to the basics. Questions for our student athletes? I'll open this up to both of you guys. Um, what was it like having the energy of the home crowd back behind you? It was two tough Power Five games that you started the season with. How'd you feel to be back in front of the home crowd? Uh, I just loved it. Um, I just loved their energy all the time, just bringing up, just making us, you know, saying, want to go out there and compete for them. So that was definitely something huge. Definitely something I was looking forward to today, too. Yeah, like you said, I mean, obviously, you know, you go to Oklahoma, it's a very big stage, but. You know, this is just as big a stage here. You know, you get to play a football game, you know, win, win or lose, you know, you get to play. And so it's fun being out here and knowing that everybody in the stands is on our side this time. Last call for courses for a few uh, What's your game plan going into number one, number one, uh, Just do what we got to do. You know, every day, you know, we need to do better uh, during the practice, during the week. You know, we need to hold everybody to the highest standard that we possibly can. And, uh, 
you know, just focus on us. It's, it's always going to be about us, like Coach Lewis says. So we're not really worried about Georgia. We're worried about us. Last couple questions. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. I'm hoping it's taking Yeah, I mean, 10 straight win at home. <laughs> 10 straight win at home. Great to uh, set a program record with that. Obviously, you know, handling the first 10 days and learned a lot from that. Thought we grew as a team today and, you know, had a very efficient day in all three phases, settled into the game to hold that offense that has made marked improvements um, from week one to week two. <laughs> and to control the game defensively. I thought that was good. There's some things that we need to clean up. Obviously, early on, um, special teams with the impactful play before the first half, you know, I thought really changed the momentum of it. And that was one thing that a week ago, I thought as a staff, I mismanaged the, the middle eight against Oklahoma that led to a snowball direction in the wrong direction. I thought we did a great job, the kids executing the plan today to win that middle eight so that we could control the outcome of the game in the manner in which we did and then put it to bed um, in a timely fashion. So overall, great win, great to set program records that we can continue to build upon. It's an awesome time to be a Kent State Golden Flash and we need a whole of the Northeast Ohio to show up here in two weeks when we got you know conference play opening up. It was an electric environment today, but I know that we can do better because our fan base is unbelievable and we all need to be here at Dick Stadium in two weeks when we battle Ohio. Let's open up for questions. Anyone want to start off? Yeah, just talking about the offensive effort. I think you scored uh, what, basically every time you had the ball other than the end of the first half. Um, you know, obviously, you have high expectations going in here, but Yeah, I mean, we have high expectations, right? We have high standards, and um, I thought the kids responded in the right way with all that. Um, you know, again, it's a testament to the work that they're putting in, the effort that they've given, and um, building confidence as we go through it. I think that unit and our team has true confidence because of the real work that they've been doing. And as long as we can keep our focus right in the right place, we'll be able to build upon this effort and continue to go forward. But anytime that, you know, I thought we were extremely efficient on first and second down, we only had seven third downs the, the whole game, which was awesome. And then to go six, four, seven, and with the one that we didn't get was later in the game where we mismanaged and put ourselves in a hole there. We need to clean that up. Um, but, you know, there were some things that were going on within the family that led to Colin having to punt, and we set kind of a, a goal, right, that, you know, hey, we need to uh, handle this, right, and to where we can control this, and, and the guys did, and they responded, and I was very pleased with their effort. Um, you come out and, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about Cooper and what he's been able to do the first two weeks, just you know, some hard run against yeah. really tough teams. First three plays today were runs to him that were successful. Um, that by design, you want to kind of establish him. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about earlier, right? I mean, he, he's one of our guys, and he's a real guy, and he puts in real work. And his effort and his attitude and his mindset individually, day in and day out, is right. You know, So he's a guy that I know that I can trust. And obviously, when you come home and you want to set a standard and you want to set the standard for what the game's going to be or set the expectation for what the game's going to be and to, to let him feel you early a little bit, to give the ball to him and to let him establish that, you know, that, that he's a guy that I know you know, you want your foxhole with you and wanted to get him going and the effort that he gives. So I was pleased with, again, the way that he always goes about his work and to him for him to have a day the way that he did today and to maximize his carries, you know, right around four, five yards, a carry, two touchdowns. He got hard yards. You know, he, he did a really good job, and he'll be the first to tell you he's got to do a better job making guys miss in the open field. He probably left some meat on the bone out there a little bit, but, you know, that, that's the way that he is. He's never satisfied, and if that can be the character of this team to where we're never satisfied, you know, good things will come from that. Just talk about Collins' performance today, his first start here. Yeah, I, I thought he did a good job. You know, 10 for 12, uh, 199 yards, two touchdowns, 50 yard strike there early um, was good. He, he did a really good job. You know, we talk all the time about taking a profit in the quarterback room, no matter what that is, right? And if you keep taking a profit, you can't go broke, right? So he did a good job of just, hey, whatever they gave him, he took. And a lot of that today was handing the football and allowing those guys up front to, to work. And so he sat in there and, you know, maximized and extended some plays with his feet. He did a really good job, a better job of keeping his eyes downfield um, as opposed to just tucking and running, which is something that we had been talking about. Um, so, again, just his growth week in and week out, he continues to get settled in and know where he can be more aggressive with his feet, where he can be more aggressive with his arm. But his decision making, the way he's valuing the football and, you know, taking a profit every single play, you know, it obviously yielded some dividends and it was a good return on investment, you know, with the way that he managed the game. I don't think he ran until um, pretty deep into the second quarter, um, which I, I know you know you try to control that. Um, sure. At the same time, he, he stiff arms a big old linebacker gets in the open field. He kind of had a chance to go out of bounds, but he just can't do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, we had a conversation about that, right? There, there's a uh, there's a time and a place for necessary hits and unnecessary hits. It's a great job, individual effort, great stiff arm, protects his legs, gets the first down, you know. And again, just knowing the journey's done, like good job, you got three extra yards on that, you know, as opposed to just step out. And so again, we had a conversation about it later in the game. Kind of same thing happens. He gets down the boundary and he slides out of bounds. So he's coachable, um, and he's also very very competitive. And, and again, kind of how we talked about with Coop earlier in the week where Coop wants the ball in his hands every single play. You know, Colin believes that he can make everyone miss, which again, that's the mindset that I want to have. And it's a fine line of allowing him that confidence and freedom to do that, but then also just understand, you know, the holistic picture and see it from 30,000 feet that, you know, it's a long battle, you know, and everything that we're going to go through, you don't need to take those unnecessary hits. You know, there's, so he did a good job with that. You want anything else for Coach? I'm good for now. Yeah. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about the offensive line. I thought they were able to control the line of scrimmage a lot with the running backs. Like Colin said, all the running backs got in the end zone today. Just talk about their performance. Yeah, I, I mean, anytime that you can establish the, the line of scrimmage and create a new line of scrimmage, um, I thought they did a fabulous job with that. They did a really good job communicating because LIU did a good job kind of varying their fronts. They were stemming and moving around. There were some things where they were putting the four eye to the back, and then they came out and they played with double four eyes, and then they came out and they were you know, changing where different techniques were. And they did a great job. Sam always does an unbelievable job of identifying the front, seeing it through, you know, one set of eyes and getting all five of those guys on the same page. And to be able to manage it the way that they did in such an efficient manner was, was really, really impressive. So I was very pleased with their effort overall. Uh, the block punt touchdown. I thought that was the play of the game. Can you just talk about how the special teams unit did today and what kind of went down on that play. Yeah, I mean, it's huge, right? And right there in the middle eight, the, the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half to get that swing um, is is everything, you know. So uh, Gavin Garcia did a great job, timed up the snap, um, did an awesome job, you know, not killing any grass there and, and being able to shave that thing off, got his hand on it. And then the, the guys would kind of what typically happens or has happened to us in the past is we block it. And then there's kind of this like, moment of panic where we just want to get it. And it's like, hey, you're good. Take a deep breath, you know, and then control it and go score. And they did that. And again, that swing at the end of the half to get that score and then to go down and score at the start of the second half, you know, it ends up being like, you know, where you're able to double up an opponent there and really get a, a firm grasp on the game. So, you know, the, the special teams is the glue that ties us all together as we're playing complimentary football. And, and our teams have been solid. Um, there's some things that we need to clean up. Um, and we'll do that. But overall, the effort was was really, really good. Um, last one for me. Cephas and Walker both had really good games today. I think they both had a touchdown. Just how good is that for you as an offense, just to have two top receivers like that who can get downfield, who can get open and allow them to to be easier to get yards for Collins. Yeah, when you have the balance of those two threats, right, it really dictates and control kind of where the secondary can roll their help, right? So if you're going to shade too much early on to Cephas, that's where, you know, Tez is able to get loose. And then once Tez gets loose, you start balancing things up and Slim gets a one-on-one. -on -one. So it just really forces the defense to, to balance, balance up, right? And ultimately, no matter what the scheme is or what you do, you know, it really comes down to space, numbers, and leverage. And if we can balance up those numbers or create a numbers advantage, then you're able to do some things offensively. And having both kids that with those abilities on either side of the ball and the work that they put in, you know, it allows us to be efficient with what we're able to do. And, um, you know, I'm glad that we have them, and I'm glad that they show up and work each and every single day to, the grow, to develop their skill set. How, how does it feel like you get your first one of the season? It's good to be a winner. It feels good, right? I mean, you know, hey, we do all this work, and at the end of the day, the bottom line is that you want to get wins, right? And so to maximize that and to extend the win streak at home, it feels good. Um, your defense was much improved on third down today. Um, LA went five for 16 on third down. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, just better application of techniques, fundamentals, and knowing where they fit in the scheme, right? And as we continue to go through this week in and week out, you know, it, the simplicity, the simple things win. If I can have great eye discipline, if I can play with great technique, if I understand where my help is, understand where the weaknesses are, you know, then you can play more aggressive, right? You, you can play more confident as you settle into it. So again, each week there's been great growth, great pro, you know, progress on that side of the ball and within our whole organization. And so I think really simply put, it's the, the application of the concepts, trusting them, trusting the guy next to you because the techniques and the fundamentals and the eye discipline was better. And then um, talk about the run defense, you know, only the one doesn't have about 2.9 yards per carry. Just talk about how they've been improving. Yeah, uh, again, you know, I, I think regardless of structure, regardless of, 
if it's flag football with St. Pat's, all right, or if it's the highest level, right? Like there's there's three factors that you need to see out of elite rush defense, and you got to play hard, right? Like that's a given. We were talking about that with Coach Johnson the other night um, on the coach's radio show. But you got to play hard. There's, there's got to be a burning desire to have a relentless pursuit that when the ball is snapped, guys are running to the ball, and then you have a desire to bring the ball carrier to the ground, more so than they have a willingness to keep running towards the goal line, right? As simple as that is. So our kids are playing really hard because their confidence is growing. You gotta set an edge to the defense. If you don't have an edge, you don't have a chance, okay? So our guys are doing a really good job of setting that edge, which then leverages the ball back to where the help is. And if we're gap sound, you have a chance. Now you win one-on-ones and individual playmakers because they pick their parents the right way, can tear off a block, they can go make a tackle, and then you go, you know, you recruited the right guys, so you go let them play. So if we can do consistently do those things, which again, we're not as consistent as I would like us to be. We're not nearly as consistent as I know Coach Johnson's expectation is, which I love, okay? But we're getting better with that each week as we go. And then um, your run game, um, 352 yards, uh, four different guys scoring. I know you see, you know, Coop wants to play every down, but I mean, describe how important it is for, you know, you don't have to rely on one guy. Also, how that helps, you know, really yeah, I mean, again, when you have balance, right, you, you're you're able to punch and counter punch, you know, and kind of dictate things on your terms. When you have competitive depth, regardless of who you're playing or where you're playing, our kids in that running back room in particular have a certain level of maturity where they know that they need to show up and they need to do right. And there's a competitive nature within that room that brings the best out in everyone, right? Like so. I think those factors alone allow us then to be extremely multiple in regards of which one of those backs, whether it's Coop, whether it's Bradford, whether it's Gavin, whether it's Shakai, like there's again true confidence and real trust that whoever's in there because of the way that they go about their business and the way that they're led by Coach Johnson, you know, we can just call it. There's not, hey, because this guy's in, Coach, you got to call it this way, or because this guy's in, you got to call it a different way. And to your point, then because we have a strong run game, you got to create more numbers or commit more numbers to stop the run, which then balances up numbers on the edge. And we get one-on-ones to Cephas, to Tez, where we can throw the ball and be efficient to where, hey, you throw it 12 times, you complete 10 passes, and two of your completions are touchdowns, and you create explosive plays because the run game starts all that and sets the tone for what you need to do. Um, a bit unrelated to today's game, but you know, two of your star players from last season are in the pros with Canada. With Canada. So just kind of questions on yeah, I mean, he's a winner, you know, and so he came back and when uh, everything happened with the Chiefs and when he came back home, he had an opportunity to swing by, you know, and we visited and everything and he had that opportunity. And so I think he's going to be a complete, you know, or, or a major value add because he's a winner, right? And winning begets more winning. So when you can bring a winner into your program, they know what winning requires. He holds the process of winning in high regard, and Nakeem does the same thing as well. So that's going to be a value add for those organizations. And, you know, it's just great that those guys have a burning desire to continue to play football, and they have an opportunity to find a spot where they get to do that. Shoot, life can wait a little bit longer for them, and they can just keep being kids and play ball, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I spoke with um, Nakeem Johnson yesterday, and he said, you know, when he looks back at you saying, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Is there any other advice you left him or Dustin Conner, any advice you would give him? I mean, you don't know what you don't know is, is awesome. And that's one thing that, again, each and every single year and each and every single day, it's kind of one of those deals that you got to learn. You got to be curious with everything. Ask questions so that you can learn, you can grow. Um, and the other thing that I probably harp on every single day that guys that have been around for a long time is work works. Like at the end of the day, what they're after and what they're looking for to continue to extend their ability to play and to get another pro contract after this one, after their rookie deal, like there's no shortcuts. They can't pull out their phone and you can't search for a professional football contract on Amazon Prime. Like it doesn't work that way. That ain't going to get overnighted to you, right? You got to put in the work to do that. And it's the only way to go through the trials and the tribulations that come with it. And work works, right? It's, it's simple, right? It's not easy, but work works. Yeah, it's what we pride ourselves on, right? Like ultimately, I'm here and my passion is to help our young men grow, plain and simple. Like we're, we're in the business of winning football games and we want to be really, really good at that. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that when the kids pass through our program and everything that has influenced them and impacted them for being at Kent State, for choosing Kent State and to do the things 
and to respond to the high standards and high expectations that we have. I want them to be uncommon and boldly prepared for life when they leave here, right? And so if they can develop a great personal self-discipline to where every single day, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what the environment is, regardless of what, um, who's watching or no one's watching, right? That they show up, they put in honest days work, they have uncommon behaviors, they're gonna yield uncommon results, right? Like the, the scoreboard takes care of itself. The fact that those young men are still playing football, that takes care of themselves because day to day, every single day, those guys showed up. And so that pattern of behavior yields, you get to keep playing. Right? And again, that's very simple to say, but it's very hard to do. But we pride ourselves, every single kid that's come through our program that has earned a degree from Kent State has gone pro in something. Whether that be pro football, whether that be a job, whether that be graduate school, 100% of the kids since the spring semester ended in 2018 when we took over has gone pro in something. And I'm more proud of that than any home winning streak or anything that there is because this game will end at some point in time. But those lessons hopefully that they learned for us or the way they, they were changed by being around us are gonna help them be better fathers, better people, better husbands, better people in this world that we can't have enough of, right? Coach Brady Hamilton, can you reflect more on what it means for you and the team breaking the all-time home winning streak? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's an unbelievable testament to all the work that's been done, and it's really cool we're at a place in our program's history, this flash fast era and, and this great time in Kent State football to have guys like a Will Matthews back on the sideline that helped lay the cornerstone of this in 2019 and got this thing started. And now they're back. And all these years later, the same winning streak that he started, we've continued, right? So when you talk about, you know, where we're at as a program, the quality of ball that the people of Northeast Ohio can come see and be a part of and help continue to grow where we're at. There's just an upward trajectory to the things that we're doing. It, it, it's awesome to be where we're at, to have a leadership team, to know how much growth and development is still to come and where we can take this thing as we continue to do the work together and build upon the great foundation that we've laid. And again, the, the sky still is the limit and we're getting started with it. So it's, it's, it's really cool. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Coach, let's talk a little bit more about Gavin Garcia. I mean, it seems like any position that you put him in, he's going to succeed. He's forcing fumbles against Oklahoma, blocking punts against Long Island. And and I know the running back room, the depth obviously takes a hit when you lose a guy like Xavier Williams. Can you talk about that next man up, next man up mentality and what you see from Gavin so far? Yeah, I mean, so again, Gavin, is, is, we kind of talked about it earlier in the week on Monday. He, he's just a kid that loves to compete. He, he loves ball and, and the makeup of who he is, the character of who he is, gives him a chance to be successful. And it's a testament to Coach Johnson and our staff and our talent acquisition process to where we went out and we identified him. And by having him along with others that can come in and they can add competitive depth to the room, again, it just it eliminates complacency every single day within the building, right? Because you know there's going to be someone that's going to be challenging you in the right way that if there's an opportunity and they're handling their business the right way, they're going to be able to seize it. So, yeah, hey, he, he recovers the fumble against Washington. He's in the mix in Oklahoma, you know, and then he's able to block the punt today and, and get the touchdown. And, and that's great. And I think also what that does is it validates and it gives evidence, you know, to our plan and, and the path to success, right, to where guys can look around and say, all right, hey, I'm not getting what I want. Okay, well, self-audit a little bit. Why aren't I getting that a little bit, right? Because there's other guys that are around you that are doing things the right way. Maybe I need to do things a little bit more like them. Maybe I need to change that pattern of behavior. And then ultimately that will yield the results that I'm after. But, you know, Gavin's got a great approach. He's got a great attitude. And, and, and again, he's one of those guys that stays humble. He stays hungry. And, you know, he, he says, thanks, coach, when he does good. But he's hungry to, hey, what can I improve upon, right? Like, he, he, he wants to be coached all the time, right? And, and some of the best guys that we've had and that we currently have on our team, after every single rep, every single moment, they're looking to be coached. They want to grow, they want to improve. Okay, that was good, but how can I be better? And that's really fun to be around. And then one more question. Um, you start the season with two hostile environments in mm -hmm. Power 5 schools, Washington, Oklahoma. 
how did it feel to be back home? What does it mean to play back in front of these fans in Northeast Ohio? Yeah, it's awesome. There's nothing like home cooking. To have your family around you and to have your fans around you and have the community around you, you know, and I'm excited to see us respond as a community, as a university, as, as, a, as a whole flash fast nation here in Northeast Ohio in two weeks because I know this was good, and, and, but we could be so much better. Right, as we're coming through town, right, like I, I just, we're coming through town, there's people in Kent that are kind of looking at the, the motorcade going by and they're like, what's this for? Like, hey, there's a ball game. You got a really good team that hasn't lost a home game since 2019. That's 110 straight. Like, everyone needs to know that. We got to share that story, all right? And so I need everyone in Flash Fast Nation and part of Kent State, all right, speaking directly to the cameras, like, in two weeks, right, we got to pack this thing. Like, this thing holds just over 20,000 people. Like, let's fill it up. Our undergraduate student population by itself is 20,000 people. Like, there should be general admissions, like, hey, overflow, student people, like, where are we putting them? Like, D. Rush and his crew should be like, well, where is everyone going? I'll figure it out. Like, let's go. I'm standing room only and make this thing even better because our kids work so hard and we are so proud to be able to share this and do this for the community. With everything else that's going on in this world, like, hey, let's come together and rally around some kids that work incredibly hard, that sacrifice for one another, that believe in delayed gratification, right? And they just want to put on a show and have fun and party with all the great people in Northeast Ohio. That's what we need to do. But it's great to be home, but it could be so much better, baby. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach. Absolutely. Last call for questions. All right, Coach, let's celebrate the right way. Yeah, that's right. Go Flashes. <laughs>